Did you know you can't be a Christian without being a disciple? It's sort of like this, like you can't be a driver of a car if you don't get out on the road. You could be sitting in the driver's seat, you could have the car running, but if the car is parked in the driveway and you never actually get out on the street, you're not the driver of a car. And in the same way, you can't be a Christian if you don't actually engage in discipleship. So, since that's true, since you can't be a Christian without being a disciple, are you one? In other words, what does it mean to be a disciple? And you know, when I ask that question in a room full of people, in a classroom or a church setting, what's a disciple? And I ask people to, to give me their answers. I mean, I get a variety of answers, but one of the most common answers I get is a disciple is a student. In fact, that's one of the ways that word disciple sometimes shows up in our English translations of the Bible is student. And in a certain sense, it's true. A disciple is a student. But here's the problem. When you think of a student, when I think of a student, what picture comes to mind? Now, my guess is, if you're like the rest of us in our context, when we think of students, we picture a classroom. And in the classroom, maybe there's a whiteboard or a chalkboard up front. There's rows of desks and there's students sitting in rows. And there's a teacher lecturing, a teacher teaching, writing things on the whiteboard. And what are the students doing? Well, the students are taking notes. They're taking notes because they've got to be able to give the right answers on the test. And that's the way being a student works in our cultural context. In our context, to be a student means you get the information the teacher gives. But in Jesus' context, in the Bible's context, when they use the word disciple or student, it means something quite different than that. The Greek word for disciple is mathetes, the Hebrew word is talmid. And in their context, the goal of the student wasn't just to know what the teacher knew, the goal of the student was to be what the teacher was. That's massively different than in our context. Can you imagine in a, say, a biology class that you're sitting in because it's a required freshman class for your college degree, and you don't go into that class with any expectation that when I get done with this class, I wanna, I wanna be exactly like the professor, right? You don't wanna be like the professor. You just wanna get the information, pass the test, get the grade, be done with the class. That's the way it works but not in Jesus' context. To be a disciple was to not only learn what the teacher knew, but to become what the teacher was. Listen to these words from Jesus in Luke chapter 6, verse 40. Jesus just assumes that this is the way being a student or a disciple works. Luke 6, 40 says, A student, when he is fully trained, will be like his master, like his teacher. And the word translated student there is mathetes, the Greek word for disciple. A disciple, when he's fully taught and trained, will be like his teacher, like his master. And Jesus can say that because that's just the assumption in the culture. That's just what everyone knew. You became a disciple, a student with the end goal of being like your teacher. So in our cultural context, the word student doesn't totally work. A word that works better is the word apprentice. Apprentice, why? Because an apprentice is an active learner. An apprentice is a doing learner. The goal of being apprentice isn't just to know the information that the teacher's trying to teach you. The goal is to be able to do what the teacher's trying to teach you, right? If you're an apprentice plumber, or you're an apprentice electrician, or you're an apprentice cabinet maker, the goal isn't just to be able to take a test and write down all the facts about plumbing or electricity or building cabinets. The goal is to be able to build cabinets. The goal is to be able to to fix pipes and do plumbing. The goal is to be able to do electrical work. That's the goal, to be able to do it. And that's more like what Jesus has in mind by the word mathetes. A disciple becomes like his teacher. Dallas Willard puts it like this, an apprentice to Jesus is learning from him how to do life the way Jesus would if Jesus were in his or her place. Like to be a disciple of Jesus, to be really an apprentice, get this, an apprentice in Jesus' school of life. That's what it means to be a disciple, to be an apprentice in Jesus' school of life. And so when you become a Christian, you 
you necessarily become a disciple. You can't be a Christian without being a disciple, and that means to sign up for Jesus' School of Life, where you're an apprentice to Jesus, to learn how to do life the way Jesus would if Jesus were in your place, living your life with your circumstances and your situations and your resources. How would Jesus live your life if he were you? That's what it means to be a disciple. You're an apprentice in Jesus' school of life. And so the goal is to become like him, to become like our master, to become like Jesus in the whole way we carry out our life, to become like him from the inside out so that in every way our life begins to reflect the very way of life of our master, our teacher, namely Jesus. That's what it means for us to be a disciple. Now, over the next few episodes in this series, I want to talk about how do you do that? What are the building blocks of? What are the core ingredients to being a disciple? And so you can check out some other videos right up here um, on this very topic of how to be a disciple of Jesus. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe right up here to my channel so you never miss an episode. And let's do this again. We'll talk soon.